Sup, 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 my name is Ryu for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. Welcome to the top 10 decks that should receive new support. Now, there are endless, endless amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! decks out there that should get support as well. So, I want you to sound off in the comments and let me know what decks that you would love to see get support. Not that I, you know, I chose 10 that I personally would kill to see get support, in all honesty. Uh, I will mention 11th one, which is going to be Gaia, but I don't feel it's a full archetype yes. Uh, yet it's more mixed in with the BLS at the moment, but just Gaia true to heart Gaia would just be Just be the shit or Jinzo Jinzo would be amazing, but that they, those are just to the side Let's talk about full-fledged decks that really could use a little bit more love True to form support just like my boy blue eyes got so let's start it off at number 10 now if you're a fan of GX and you're gonna love the first couple of these Neospatian and the reason I say Neospatian over something like Destiny Hero is because Neospatian has been a little more less of an engine. So Neospatian was used a while ago in a deck called Junk and Debris. Now unfortunately, uh, Debris is at 1 and Junk is sitting at 3, but Road is limited so the deck can still cannot be played. <laughs> cannot be why, and even if it could, it wouldn't really keep up with today's game state. Neospatian are an interesting deck though. They have the fusions, they have really good effects, they just take a hard time getting on the board and going with it. At best, you're going to have fun with the deck, and at best, is not the best. You want more than that. You want to actually not, you don't need to complete, you know, completely destroy the meta, but you need a deck that will work a good chunk of the time. Neospatian are really not that. They're more of a fan favorite deck that really could use the support. Neos uh, has all the support in the world because he's fucking Neos. But we're talking true to form Neospatian. Flame Scarab, the uh, Dark Panther, the Aqua Dolphin, the whole shit ding ding here. Grand Mole, um, the Glow Moss, and I kid, Air Hummingbird. I remembered all their names for once. But Neospatians are, are in an interesting setup as to where they all have different effects and it'd be fun to see that whole thing play out. They have not gotten love since Tactical Evolution. Maybe they did the set after, but I don't believe they did. Oh wait, they did, they got one card, I'm sorry. It was like Phantom Darkness was the last time they got love. Phantom Darkness, Light of Destruction was like the last era they got love. And that was back in 2008. It's almost 10 years. So if there's any deck out there that really could use a support Neospatian is definitely one of them. My number nine pick is Crystal Freaking Beast. Let's be honest with each other. They gave him one or two new cards and still wasn't enough. The deck's not fully there yet and it sucks that it's fully not there yet because no matter how long you have tried to get this deck to fully be a thing, it cannot be a thing because Konami does not give it the proper means to have that. There are plenty of ways to get Crystal Beast to work. They are an interesting playstyle. Yes, you know, you have the pendulums now, you, you make use of them. But true, the same problem still, end of the day, becomes a thing. Either your back row's clogged, or you can't draw into what you need, or the support's not there, the deck's not fast enough, or you require to run so many of these cards, and you get into the situation that it just feels awful. Crystal Beast are one of those decks that could either use a complete facelift think the new six samurai over the old six samurai you know the legendary edition of six samurai the ones with uh with she and the synchro and not she and the effect monster but crystal bees are one of those decks that could use a facelift at this point in time to actually get them rolling but hey that's just my opinion my number eight spot is fortune ladies these guys come from arc uh, i'm sorry arc, arc v excuse me they come from five d's they come from 5Ds, which was a while ago, and pretty much one of my favorite animes uh, for the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, in all seriousness. Maybe one day I'll do a top 5 on my favorite like Yu-Gi-Oh! animes. I, I'll rank them, per se, and I'll let you give a discussion why, if you guys want that. We can make it happen next week. Could be our Christmas special. <laughs> the lies. Uh, Alright, so anyway, Fortune Ladies. They have such an interesting concept. And especially with Pendulums now, they get a little bit more love. You know, they just require setup, but in that Alachi allows them to help with the setup to a degree. Yes, I'm actually going to make that a thing. But when it comes to true to form decks, Fortune Ladies are just an interesting pile of cards that don't really get you anywhere. 
I mean, this is probably the cheapest of the budget decks you could ever find next to the number 7 and 6 bots. But, Fortune Ladies is just one of those decks that really does need new cards in general to boost them up just a little bit. Because we're talking back end of Tier 5 right now. We're not talking even close to Tier 2 or Tier 3. We're just happy points. We're not. We're just talking back of the end, and that sucks. And honestly, Fortune Ladies would just make my day to see get support. My number 7 spot is true to my heart because the first time I saw them they reminded me of a game from 1995 called Primal Rage. Uh, my years may be off but it was something around there. And Primal Rage was a dinosaur beat em up game that was uh, like a Mortal Kombat rip off but with dinosaurs. So when I saw Jirax for the first time it pretty much reminded me of that. <clears throat> Jirax are interesting to say the least because you gotta be careful how you give them support to be completely fair. If you're not extremely careful how you give them support, then you have Loggy and Dulka Spam, and no one really likes Loggy and Dulka Spam, even though Kaiju is the greatest answer to every problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment. If you don't believe me, trust me, Kaiju get over 90% of the Yu-Gi-Oh!'s issues. The only thing that the deck is not is fast enough to really keep up with everything, but hey, you stop 90% of the fucking problems you have with Yu-Gi-Oh! So, Jirax are in this interesting boat, to say the least. I attack, I get a uh, benefit for attacking, if I don't attack, I'm like GBs, but kind of worse. Okay, not kind of worse, just completely worse. So, back in the day, Burden of the Mighty was a made, uh, you know, amazing tech for this fucking deck. With the Rise of Exceeds and now Pendulums, Jirax were left in the dust. In one of those forgotten archetypes like Ally of Justice, I still remember them, and just thrown into the barrel of people's binders, of crap binders, where they try to sell it to you, and that hurts me. Jirax are one of those decks that came out of a hidden arsenal pack, and ever since then I've always wanted them to get even more support. They haven't gotten in years, and they can deserve even more. My number 6 spot is a deck that hasn't even gotten close to where Jirax has, is Spiders. When I look in the comment section and I talk about decks that need support, Spiders are one of the most talked about decks in the comment section. And I was trying to secretly build a deck for you guys to get it to work, and I couldn't! I failed! I won't even lie, I failed at it! Spiders are one of those decks that, they have this really cool concept, and I've only seen it go off once, as I let the guy just go ham and do it. And basically they go into the, the synchro from 5Ds, and they swing at you, and they swing at you, and they put your ass in defense mode. And it's just really annoying, but really hilarious at the same time. But you don't get to do it because A, they're so slow, and B, they're underdeveloped like a motherfucker. With a little bit more love, this deck could actually flourish as its own beast. And that would be so cool to see, because let's be honest, Venoms deserve it, Aliens deserve it, everything in the, in the world deserves it. But Spiders is just so underdeveloped. If they had that little bit of love, that Konami touch, that Konami just like going around like the fucking card of Solomon going, You get a sports car! You get a sports car! You're definitely not getting a sports car because your name is Necrot. I'm sorry. It's kind of true because that new that new ritual spell card, that's the re main reason I say that. So don't take offense to it, Necrot's players. I feel for you. I feel for your loss. Trust me. I'm still feeling my infinity loss. So... Spiders just kind of like sit down there. They can't really do anything, but they're a really cool concept and a really cool deck that could use the extra love. So give them a sports mobile, goddammit. Number five, UA, Ultra Fucking Athletes. This deck has been begging for a little bit more support to be the best budget deck you could build. But the problem is, with the limitation of reinforcement to the army, the lack of level 4 monsters to actually utilize to get out your bigger guys, you're stuck with Monarch Storm 4th, uh, the Wild Beast, and trying to get to your midfielder. When you have one card that is pretty much 90% of the core of the deck, which is midfielder, then that hurts the deck. And you have all these ways of getting it out, but if you stop the deck from special summoning, the only way to jump around that whole thing would be Monarch Storm 4th with the deck. Now, if you try to use Monarch Storm 4th and have Zombie World up, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! The deck's not hard to stop, and that's what sucks, because the deck is such a cool concept of these ultra-athletes, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters that are football players and baseball players in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. And that right there 
it's, it should be interesting to everyone to some degree. Because I think 90% of people would find something to enjoy when it comes to sports. Maybe not everyone, but some, you know, there's got to be one for you. I mean, come on, there's literally everyone in there. So, I mean, not everyone's in sports, but it is what it is. UA is really one of those cool decks that could use it. Um, my number four spot. You're going to get probe. It's time for the aliens. <laughs> aliens are one of those decks that can control the board, but they were so damn slow that that's the problem when it comes to it. If they had the speed needed, true to form draw power, true to form search power, then the deck would actually rise back up to a degree, not meta wise, but to a degree where it would actually be seen. Be a fun locals deck, take it to your locals, have fun with it. You can do that now. But you're not going to get as far. Aliens are one of those very, very much kind of like UAs and Drax and Fortune Ladies and Crystal Beasts. Well, not really Crystal Beasts because they were on the anime. They're one of those decks that are just underdeveloped. And they need more love from Daddy Konami. And Konami's like, no, you're not getting shit. And they just sit there and go, we'll wait and we'll wait and we'll wait for that phone call. But... Aliens are pretty much like at the bottom of the barrel after Konami goes, all right, what nostalgic everything can we throw at people? Come on, let's give them red eyes. Let's give them blue eyes. Let's give them, uh, let's give them some dinosaurs that are pendulums. Fuck your ex, man. Just give them, just give them bottom of the barrel stuff. Let's give them harpies. But when it comes down to it, aliens are one of those decks that is bottom of the barrel, needs support that Konami should be looking at that they're not. And it's a deck that's not hard to sell. Because it's a really cool concept. And especially around the time Star Wars coming out. Instead of trying to push Cosmos down everyone's throats. Aliens would have been a nice thing to try to push down people's throats with Cosmos. Because when you think about it. Hypothetically. Star Wars creates height for everything. You know space wise. And this is true. Because even on Arrow and Flash. Which are completely different medias than Yu-Gi-Oh. Have Star Wars kind of relations into their episodes a force choke or some lightning you know just a little nod to it now Yu-Gi-Oh kind of is a little less of an obvious nod with Cosmos just saying how it is we all know the Star Wars push is gonna go all the way to February and further <laughs> but um aliens would have been perfect timing to come back now Konami missed the missed the you know missed the shot there that they had it would have been really cool to see the deck actually rise up and been a thing. So, Miss Opera. Number three is Agents. And the reason for Agents is because, again, one of those underdeveloped decks. Had a really cool concept. Had a really great structure deck. And yeah, Konami, that's cool that you're giving Felgrand that support. You know, the Dragon, not the Exceed. That you're giving the Dragon support. And I commend you for that. But at the same time, after you're done with him, you need to come back to Agents. You need to bump them up a little bit. Because, you know, they need a little bit extra support. And you could just ban Christia if everyone's, like, scared of Christia. You could just ban the fuck out of Christia. I don't think anyone's really going to get mad about it. When it comes down to it, agents have the tuners. They have the spammer. They have the master Hyperion. But you know what happens? They get power creeped out. They lose speed. They don't get the love anymore. They don't get daddy, you know, Konami, uh, K uh, daddy Konami's money anymore. They don't get that mo money. They don't get that mo money to support their deck and they just fall to the wayside and you could play a Sapphire version it's gonna be a bitch but you could play a Sapphire version especially with that pre prep rights that is the thing you could do but it's not gonna take you far and agents are just one of those decks that sits in the minds of a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players and it would have been prime time to start bringing them back my number two spot is another 5D's deck is Nordics because I don't want to offend anyone, but Nordics are kind of awful. They're too slow. <coughs> they require flip effects. They're just a casual fun deck. That's what you probably hear a lot. I think Nordics honestly have a lot of potential. They have this really cool design where they bring out the Nordic Gods. And when they bring out the Nordic Gods, well, you're kind of fucked. But the problem with getting to those Nordic Gods, it's so damn difficult. And I'm not saying it needs to be 100% easy. I'm just saying in general, if you have a deck that the whole strategy is to bring out this Nordic God, then wouldn't you want to make the deck viable to a degree? Wouldn't you want the deck to succeed? It had, what, one or two packs at the Extreme Victory? 
<laughs> I mean, it's it just kind of sucks. And they did get TCG exclusives, and they they looked pretty good. They were you know hitting top tables for a little while, and then they fell off the face of the earth. And they haven't rose back up since. They're underdeveloped. They could use that pure power support, and Konami should be looking at them too. But I think at this point, most people may already figure out what my number one is. Now I had both of them, so it was cool. But Dark Magician is one of those things that even right now, I love building for the channel, but it's so underdeveloped. When you try to make a pure Dark Magician deck, it looks really cool until you realize Eternal Soul is not in TCG. And if it comes to TCG, the deck's still not going to be up to snuff to where Blue Eyes or Red Eyes is. It's the lower of the three. And Red Eyes suffers from consistency, and Blue Eyes suffers from making choices. Let's be honest, with all those new cards, it kind of is. But besides the point, Dark Magician, at the end of the day, it's one of the most deserving decks. Not just for nostalgic reasons, not just because it would sell like fucking hotcakes. Don't lie to me, you know it's true. And yeah, you can mix it with them pendulums, but that's not keeping it true to form. When you think about Dark Magician, you think about one of the most iconic monsters over almost 15 years in any card game. You see the Dark Magician, you should know that is Yu-Gi-Oh! at its finest. To be fair, Dark Magician Girl is pretty much up there too. But just the snuff that Magician Girl is getting support before Dark Magician is kind of rubbing the salt in my wounds right now when it comes to it. And I'm telling you, after Shining Victories, maybe the set after, Konami needs to sit down because Buster Blair got that fucking support too beforehand. Dark Magician needs that support. Complete, straight out, 5 to 10, 15 card support. I'm not even joking. Whether it be a structured deck, whether it be whatever, it needs new support. And yeah, you can splash this and you can splash that. Ryu, you have Prisma, you have all these great fusions. But just like Blue Eyes before it, you still don't have a way to completely utilize it. And until Konami completely does that, I'll be the guy raising my hand saying Dark Magician should always get that number one spot. For the most iconic monster in this goddamn game. For the one that led the way. For the one that got most of us to get mom and dad, or your aunt and uncle, or your grandma, whoever, your sister, to buy you stuff that had Yu-Gi-Oh on it. It's the most deserving deck in the fucking world to get support. That's my reasoning behind it. Because honestly, Dark Magician's iconic. It is. It would have a cool play style. It's got its own fucking heavy storm. It's got its own way to special to the board. But what do you do when you special to the board and it gets taken out? You wasted 4,000 life points. Now to be fair, you could play the deck other ways. But still, when it comes down to it, the deck's underdeveloped. Blue Eyes has got what? Fucking... Spirit Dragon, Blue Eyes Alternative, Blue Eyes White, it's got the Azurize, it's got the Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, well, the Azurize Spirit Dragon, it's got like, five, that's six, I'm sorry, that's five right there, and then you got the Blue Eyes Twin and the Blue Eyes Ultimate, can we get some love in Dark Magician Camp? I know I'm kind of jumping camps back and forth, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, I would kill to see Dark Magician support. I would love to have Dark Magician support. I would play that shit every day. You know what I'm going to do? Probably come Friday. I'm going to build a budget Dark Magician deck just because I want to get the deck underway. I want to sit there and play my Dark Magicians. I want to play my badass Dark Magician. I don't care if he's got 500 less than fucking Blue Eyes. I don't care if it's not meta. I just care that it's fun. And that's what a lot of people lose when they look at the competitive aspect, to be fair. And that's pretty much why I love it. Anyway... Besides the point, if you guys enjoy this top 10, let me know what you want to see on future top 10s. I'm Ryu for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content and you agree with me or you have something you want to say, leave it in the comments. But subscribe for more.